What's going on, family? God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo with your brother DJ Sam Rock. I'm here for another session for another Morning Devo. Amen. And we're here. Amen. The good part about me being here is that you're here with us. Amen. And that God has a word for our lives to start off the day. So that way we could be active in what God is doing in our lives. We could be active in what God is doing through his word, which is so important. And so that way we could get together and give each other hope and encouragement. Because listen, all the hope I have that I give is from the Lord. And I find his hopeful words and his encouragement from his word. So the world is like trying to beat us down daily. But the word is trying to bring us up daily. Trying to encourage us, give us hope, give us a future, right? Um, It's all planned out for our lives. I don't know exactly what's going to happen a minute from now, a day from now, an hour from now. But I do know the one who has everything in order and everything planned out for my life. I know him personally. Do you know him personally? The one who offers heaven. His name is Jesus. Did you give your life to him? My name is DJ Sam Rock, a.k.a. Sam Lopez, Brother Sam. Amen. And I try to do these morning devos Mondays through Fridays, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time within that hour. I'm not always right on time because this is not a a show. This is a, a live stream and a live podcast. So... Uh, it's not a perfect world when you're doing live streams, live podcasting, and I don't edit pretty much anything unless it's a really messed up or blunderous situation. Um, but for the most part, I just let it ride because I know that I'm relying and trusting on Holy Spirit God to do what he only could do is convince the people that he is God and convict the people of their sin enough so, but with love enough so that we would go to him and ask Jesus Did you give your life to Jesus? We ask Jesus for forgiveness. So there's a QR code. If you're watching, scan that QR code. It takes you to a free resource that I created just to try to help you um, go through this question in your life once and for all. It's a one and done deal. Once you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, um, you're signed, sealed, and delivered. The rest is all a progression, a process, amen, and we have to go through the process. It's a lot of pain, right, sometimes. It's a lot of... um, anger. There's a lot of complaint. Whatever we go through, God will be there with us. That's the difference between my faith and faiths around the world that say Jesus is not God. Is that whatever they believe in, whatever they believe in, whoever they believe in um, is not present with them. But I know for sure, every time I read the scriptures for myself, amen, the author of the scriptures, the one who inspired men to write the Bible is with me. There's no other book I ever read in my whole entire life, and I don't think that I will ever read in my whole entire life that I sense the presence of God every time I read it. I'm telling you. So if you want the full experience of what's happening on the Morning Devos, on the Blaze Bible Study, on Soul Winners, Inc., just go to live.soulwinnerswithaz.org. I'm looking at it right now to make sure everything's up and running. They have, it has a timer on the top right. I don't know if you see the timer. I know I see the timer. And it has a live chat. It has a place where you can take notes, a place where you can see my notes. Because I do, do have notes for my morning devos. And there's an interactive Bible. And over there is like clean, no pop-ups, no notifications like that. It's just a clean site so that you could concentrate. If you're, if you're like me, I get distracted real quick. So I, I, I cannot stand all the pop-ups and everything that comes up on social media while I'm trying to do this. Um, but here we are. Amen. So let me just say good morning to uh, a sister and friend from a long time, for a long time, Sister Mayasol. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo, my sister, my friend. Amen. And um, I'm glad to see that you're still ministering um, through social media and you have uh, Facebook groups and all that um, that that I joined and I have to get into it. So God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. So today's Morning Devo, I'm calling it Hope and Encouragement. I think that's what I called it, right? Let me get to it. Because I always seem to um, mess things up. Hope and encouragement. And the question is, how does the Bible impact your life? How does the Bible impact your life? Um, The key word is your. Like your life. Not my life. I could tell you all day, every day. But it's something different when you read the word for yourself. Amen. And then God starts using the word of God to impact your life. I'm saved because God transformed my life. I can't explain to you what God did way back in 2001. I can only repeat what he did through the word. Amen. So I read the word and I speak the word. And I think that's 
one of the secret things that we do as believers to keep going and keep hopeful and keep encouraged and stay encouraged. So we're going to take a minute to pray. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, don't hesitate to leave them right here on the live chat. Also, if you're listening from the podcast, please connect with me, contact me. Um, if all else fails, if you don't know how to connect or contact me through the podcast, go to live. That's someone is with a Z org. Sign up. It takes less than a minute. Put your picture, your name, and your best email so I could send you some free stuff that I put together all the time. Amen. Uh, for you. So that way it can help you stay hopeful and stay encouraged. Amen. Sister Ruby, God bless you. Long time. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. Oh, it's Danny. Amen. Danny, God bless you. Long time too. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. It's good to see you here, man. God bless you. So we're going to take a minute to pray and then um, we'll share this out for a minute. If you know somebody right now that you said, man, they should be on here so we could get this hope and this encouragement. But you say, man, they don't have social media. Listen, I'm streaming right now from YouTube, right? At DJ Sam Rock. All you got to do is put DJ Sam Rock on YouTube, on Twitch, if for the gamers, for some whatever reason, they like to use Twitch. DJs like to use Twitch and um, social media. But if they don't have that, it's okay. All they have to do is have a mobile device, a laptop, a desktop. They could go straight to live. with a Z.org. Send them that link. And then they'll be right with us. Amen. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that even this, in these times that we face, Lord God, these times are tough. And Father God, we need a lot of hope. We need a lot of encouragement. And Lord God, you provide that. You give hope and encouragement daily to every single person who calls upon your name to be rescued, to be saved, to be encouraged, to be um, helped in whatever area we need your help, Lord God. You are a present help in a time of need. I thank you, Lord God, for your love, your grace, and your mercy for every single viewer, every single listener. I thank you, Lord God, that I'm not the only one that gets discouraged. I'm not the only one that gets attacked by the enemy. I'm not the only one who goes through processes of life. And I thank you for that, knowing that I'm, I'm encouraged right now to speak life over every single person that's connecting and that will connect later by way of podcast or by way of viewership on the live stream. And I ask, Lord God, that you would send forth archwing angels, ministering angels, warring angels to annihilate, destroy all the enemy's tactics over our lives in Jesus' name. And give us a season to just think and to breathe in Jesus' name. Thank you for your hope. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your salvation. So I give you glory, honor, worship, and praise. As I pray for everyone's family, my family included, my family included, in Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Let's take a minute. When we come back, we'll be in Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Romans chapter 15, verse 4, when we come back after this minute. Let's share, share, share. I'll be right back. Amen, amen. The fastest 60 seconds in all internet history right there, man. I can't believe how fast that minute goes. Let's get into the scripture. Romans chapter 15, verse number 4. The Bible says, such things were written in the scriptures long ago. We already know that this was long ago. To teach us and the scriptures give us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promises, plural, to be fulfilled. God's promises to be fulfilled. Now, if you know me and you know my testimony, me and my wife's testimony, we were waiting on a promise from God for over 15, 16 years. And we were holding on to that promise because, listen, there was nothing else to hold on to at the point where we were. But not that God 
not did not only did God deliver on that promise, he doubled it up. Amen. The promise was that he would give us a child. Right? So a lot of people even say, Well, everybody gets pregnant, everybody has been well, it wasn't our situation. It wasn't that easy for us. Amen. So God promised and he kept on sending evangelists, prophets, pastors, teachers, apostles. He would send bishops. He would send all these people to remind us of that word and that promise. So we waited and waited and waited. And that, and God did double. He said he was going to, he promised us he was going to give us a child, a healthy child, to live with us on this side of eternity so we could raise. And we're like, praise the Lord. That child right now, that promise is seven years old right now. Her name is Selah. Then God doubled it up. Um, let's see, five years later, right? Yeah. He gave us another promised child. Her name is Leah. She's one years old. We held on to the promise because there was nothing else to hold on to. We read the word. We saw it in the word. And people were repeating what the word said over our life. And we kept on hearing this promise over and over again. After one year, two years, three years, you were like, okay, this ain't happening. Five, ten, fifteen years, you're like, this definitely ain't happening. And then when we decided to let go and let God do his thing, he gave us the promise. So I hope you're encouraged that if God gave you a word, hold on to that word. If he gave you a promise, hold on to that promise. It's coming. I just I just can't tell you when. Good morning, Sister Wandy. Wanda. Good morning, Sister Wanda. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. God bless you and your fam. I'm a witness to that promise. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You were a part of the process too. That's why we love you. Uh, you were part of the process. You believed with us. And sometimes, listen, it's not as easy to believe in something that no one can see and it seems to be dire and impossible. So I, you, you literally put your life out there and put your name on it. But we're putting our name behind God's name. Amen. So I'm not talking about pie in the sky dreams or stuff like that. I'm talking about a promise that you continue to get in your spirit. People bring the same promise to you. Um, so it, it was deep uh, process. Uh, good morning. Good morning. God bless you. God is good. Uh, uh, be of good courage. Be courageous. Faithful is our God. He keeps his promises. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Let's see what it says, how it says it in the Amplified Version. The same scripture, Romans 15, 4. The Amplifier says, For whatever is written in earlier times was written for our instruction. So I take that as it was written long ago, but it's still useful for today. I'm telling you, it's still useful for today. The Bible, you read the Bible, Sam? That Bible is so outdated, so irrelevant. I could tell when people tell me that, I could already tell. They don't read the Bible. Because if they read the scriptures for themselves, they realize, wait a minute, this seems like it happened today. God's word is a now word. It's not a yesterday word. It's not a fu- it has future. It has prophecy, but it's also a today word. It, yes, it was written a long time ago. That's why, you know, I love the scriptures because it was written so long ago. And you're like, how, how did God know that so long ago that this was going to happen? He wrote it already. It's already written. The Bible is an open book test. Take it, right? You can't fail. You will not fail. You will always pass if you read the open book test. Amen? For whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction so that through endurance, see, it's a process, through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope and overflow with confidence in his promises. None of my promises, none of your promises, but God's promises. Yesterday, um, I was praying that God will give me the overflow. Amen. Continuous overflow so I can give, receive and give. I want to be in a continuous overflow of his word, of his spirit, because I know without him and his spirit, I'm just I'm just spinning wheels. I'm just running on on burned gas. I'm not um, traveling too far. I'm not doing anything if I'm not relying on him to fill me up in his spirit. So what I'm saying is, if you need hope and you need encouragement, we have it. The Bible, basic instructions before leaving this earth, we have it. The reason why a lot of people don't think that the Bible has their answers is because it probably doesn't have your specific name or your specific issue or your specific problem or trouble that you're facing. You may think that, right? But God has a way. 
even though my name is not specifically written in the scriptures, he has a way of letting me know that he's there for me through his word. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but if we have all of these promises that God promised us, right, as believers, and we have all this hope. We have all this encouragement. We have the prophetic word. We know what's going to happen because God said it was going to happen. We have um, stories of men and women who failed and God redeemed. And, and we have all of this. My question is, why wouldn't we be interested in reading this word, this living, breathing word every day? I know life happens. I'm, I'm, I'm one of the busiest persons, I guess, in the world. Um, I'm not like sitting down all day in my house um, playing um, Parcheesi or something. I'm busy, but I never, I'm never too busy to pray for me and my family, for you and your family. I'm never too busy to read the Word. I'm never too busy to listen to the Word. The Word is always as a whisper in my studio, 247. Amen. As long as we have internet, um, the Word is playing 247 in my studio. Why? Because I need that. Because it gives me hope and it gives me encouragement. Amen. Sometimes I'll be like, man, you know, if you look at the news for more than five minutes, you're going to be like, man, there's no hope. Um, man, this is crazy. And you're going to be like downcast. And you're going to feel like, man, um, we all need Jesus, right? It's not just a cliche. I believe that for sure. We all need Jesus. And sometimes I'm like, well, the people who don't have Jesus, how do they make it? How do they get by? Where do they get their hope from? Where do they get their encouragement from? And then I think about my testimony. I'll be like, oh, yeah. I know where they get it from, where they're trying to get it from. Sex, drugs, and alcohol. That's where they're trying to get their hope and encouragement from. Um, but this is a supernatural high. This word is a supernatural high. I get a supernatural high at whatever moment. That's why a lot of people, when you know, I see my old friends and they're still in their element, smoking weed, drinking, and all that, I could walk right alongside of them. And they might think that I'm high because I could get to a certain level where I listen to where they're at, from where they're at. So that way I could listen and give them back encouragement right to where they're at. The reason why I know that is because God came to where I was. I was broke, busted, disgusted. Well, I take back the broke part. I, would, I always, thank you, Jesus, always had financial stability. But I was, you know, discussing my own life. I was living a ratchet, not a righteous life, a ratchet life. And I was down and out. So he didn't come to me and kick me while I was down. He came to my situation, listened to me, listened to my brokenness, and saved me. That's why I know I think that's one of the keys. Listening to someone's situation, being there from how they want to present themselves. Whether you know they find themselves in sin or drunk high, whatever the situation. A listening ear that has a loving intention, amen, brings people hope and encouragement. And then when you bring the word, or sometimes they won't want to. They don't want to hear about the Bible. They don't want to know about the Bible. Amen. They just want to know that someone's listening and someone loves them. People are craving to be loved. People are craving to be listened to. People are in need of hope and encouragement. And the Bible says, for whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction. People say, oh, the Bible. It says you can't do this. It says you can't do that. Yeah, there's a lot of do's and don'ts in the scriptures. I have to admit that. But they're all for good intention. God knows what's best for us. Why would God want us to walk off, off a cliff? And if you take one more step, you can't see it because you're blind. Before Jesus, I was blind. I had no spiritual eyes. I was blind. So if I took one more step, I would have fell off a cliff and perished and went to eternal damnation. I would have been separated from God for all eternity. But before I took that last step, he came and rescued me. Why? I don't know. I think it's because of his love, his burning love for us, his creation. He created us not to just, okay, I created you. Now let me send everybody away. No, he created us to have communication, to have a relationship with us. So the scriptures, uh, and, okay, the Bible says so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, right? So don't give up. We have the word on it the word of God, the Bible, we might have hope and overflow with confidence in his promises. Now, how does the Bible impact your life? I'm telling you, if your, if your Bible is just like, you know, a decoration in your house, or maybe it's on your phone, but you never opened the app yet, the Bible app or whatever app you have, you haven't listened to it yet, 
Um, you might be saying, Sam, you don't know. My schedule is crazy. I have kids. I have two jobs. I go to school at night. And there's no way I could like sit down and read the scriptures. Okay. Um, if you're traveling with your children and you have a car at least within the last 15 years, um, there's a thing called an aux cable or Bluetooth. And you can connect your Bible app. Press play, and you can listen to the scriptures. I know a lot of people in the car will be like, Mom, Dad, what are you listening to? Well, you're listening to the Word of God that will not only impact your life, but will change your life, and it will give you hope and encouragement. There's no other time that I could think of in my calendar, as long as I've been alive, that we are in desperate need of hope and encouragement during the times we're facing. People are losing loved ones um, because of COVID, because of coronavirus, because of Omicron or whatever you call it. And you mean to tell me we don't need hope and encouragement? And we don't need people to band alongside of us so we could go through this together? Now, we need God. We need each other. We need to be hopeful and we need to be encouraged. Hope and encouragement is a free gift from God. Do you realize that God is patient with us? He's so patient with us. It's incredible. He's so patient with me that I can't complain. You know, I'm not as patient at all with anybody, including myself. But God's patience is amazing. Don't you wish that God wasn't so patient with some people that are doing some evil things? Because God is patient even with the evildoers, even with the ones that are, are doing horrible things to other people. He's patiently waiting for them to repent. Because God's wish, Jesus wished that none should perish, but everyone have eternal life. Amen. That's his wish. That's his hope. And it gives encouragement. But sometimes I wish, God, you would just do away. For instance, when you're on the highway and you're going to speed limit or probably five or ten miles over the speed limit. And you're like, wow, you know, I'm going a little fast. And here comes Mario Andretti, a truck or a car flying by you doing 110, honking a horn, trying to get you out of the way. I wish at that point that it would get pulled over by the police. Nine out of ten times, I have never seen it. But I know one thing. I have this thing in my mind that if I try to go 110 miles an hour on the highway, there's going to be helicopters, planes, um, cop cars, you know, horses. They're all going to be chasing me down to give me that ticket. So God is patient with me, and God is patient with you. We need to be patient with one another. Yes, I'm not where people think I should be. Um, it was prophesied years ago, I should be having a building by now. I should have this, that, and a third. Um, I should be um, training thousands of youth and whatever. Amen. Yeah, um, that's the prophetic word over my life. Amen. Um, and I guess God has shown me patience because I need the financial backing for all of that. And I'm not stressing it. Trust me, I'm not stressing money. No way am I doing that because God, God showed me a long time ago why we worry about that. Worry about what's, he said, actually, don't worry about anything. Just trust in him. Amen. And trusting in him, he will provide everything, not that I want all the time, but everything that I need for sure, because that's his promise. His word is his will, right? And his promises are all true. And everything that he's trying to do in our lives will bring us hope and encouragement for the future, right? In the book, of, I believe Jeremiah says he has a hope and a future for us, not to hurt us, not to harm us, but to give us life, to give us fruitful things, to give us things that give us hope, that encourage us to move forward. People battle with depression. Depression is a real thing. And I'm not into psychology. I'm not obviously, uh, you know, a person who's skilled in those areas. But I believe this attached with some spirits. Depression comes with some spirits attached and they're ungodly spirits. I believe that 100% just because of what I see in the scriptures and when people were dealing with demons and, you know, spirits that led people to do things and discouragement and all that. I just think it's attached with the spirit. Can you not see, and I hope you get spiritual eyes right now, can you not see that God wants to work with you through your depression, through your hurt, through your pain, and he brings you hope to make sure that you know that you're not alone. And he encourages you to make sure that you know that his word is the go-to. When you're depressed, when you're struggling, when your uh, your past life is trying to come into your present life, his word is the reason why 
He gave it to us. His letter of life, his letter of love. Amen. You can see his passion for us there. You can see his love for us there. You can see his mercy for us there. You can see how patient he is with us. It's an amazing book. The Bible is alive, active, breathing, right? Sister Joanne, God bless you. I think about a lot of things, but I just thank God for thank God for another day that he gives me to wake up. And what I have for today, I went through a lot and I'm still here yet. Yes, because if you're still here, that means he still has something for you to do and he wants to do something for you in your life. Amen. So he could be glorified in your life. Amen. So our pain is on purpose. Amen. Our pain is on purpose. I pray sometimes in painful ways. Amen. And I also pray with a promise in it. I put a promise in my prayers because I know that God's promises are all good. So whether you want to call that prophetic praying or whatever, I call it biblical praying because I pray back what the word of God says. A lot of times you might not notice my prayers. You might say, well, Sam, every time you pray, it sounds the same. I'm repeating the promises of God over my life and over your life and your family and your whole bloodline. God's word and the powerful prayer of the righteous availeth much. So I try to make sure that when I pray, it's availing much. It's availing much. It's doing much in the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of God, and taking people out of the kingdom of darkness. Amen. Sister Wanda says, I am set free from depression. God delivered me. Yes, he did. Amen. And depression, I used to deal with that. I used to battle with that when I was younger. It's no joke. Amen. And actually, when I first dealing with started dealing with depression, I had no hope. I had no Jesus. I had God. God wasn't in, even in my life. So it used to beat me down. So to numb that feeling right of depression, I used to go to drugs and alcohol and, and girls, you know, and the party life. I used to try to numb all of that out, that depression, by doing those things. And if you ever lived that life before, you know that's a temporary fix. You you know that's that does not take care of the issue. It'll give you a, a personal high for just a little bit. But when that high comes out down and you crash and burn, you're back to even being depressed even more. But when you're with Jesus, I'm not saying that you won't be depressed as a believer, as a Christian. I am saying that when you are depressed and you go to the one who has your hope and your comfort and your encouragement, he's there with you. It's a big difference between being all alone in your depression and being depressed knowing that God is with you. Big difference. Amen. And it's a consequence of some things that I might not know about in my life, maybe, that happened that um, our family allowed into our lives. And we had to deal with all this stuff in my family. I don't know about your family, but my family, we opened so many doors to let all these type of evil spirits in um, that we suffered the consequences for that. Amen. But God is cleaning house. He's delivering family members, saving family members, encouraging and giving hope. Amen. And a lot of us are still around. A lot of us have not made it um, this far, but a lot of us are still around. Amen. So that means there's still hope. And I'm here to encourage. And the word of God is always available. Please don't believe the hype. The Bible is still relevant. Don't believe the hype. The Bible still is relevant. People are saying, ah, oh, we don't need that no more. We have, you know, this new thing and that new thing. We have psychology and we have new age and we have the progressive church and we have the law of the land, you know, the government. We don't need the scriptures no more. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Actually, when every time I say that, repeat that, you can smell the smoke coming from hell. It's, it's a lie. Read the word for yourself. I challenge you right now. If you're one of those people who say, ah, I'm not into that religious stuff. Well, read the book called the Bible and see how the Bible will impact your life. And then come back to the morning Devo and we'll welcome you as a believer because only God could do that. Only God could have his word being read and then activated in your life. And then you will see that God's word is true and powerful. So I'm out of here. I'm out of time. I hope you are blessed. I hope you have hope and encouragement after this. Um, stay in the word. Read the whole Romans chapter 15, the whole chapter for yourself so you could be blessed. God bless you. God keep you. And remember always that God, he's good. Peace.